Now I just need to terminate the branch circuits. All the non-metallic wire I ran from the attic through these conduits into this sub panel is now terminated. The sub panel main breaker is off, so we're good. It's not hot. I ran everything in this panel counterclockwise. And the reason is, because this is a sub panel and it needs a ground bar, I put that ground bar in here. That ground bar takes up a lot of real estate. And not only that, I used combination arc fault circuit breakers. NEC 217 says I'm supposed to use them for new branch circuits if available. These arc faults were not available in Florida, so I ordered them from a circuit breaker company, I think in Indiana or something like that. Uh, just for a peace of mind, I put in 900 foot runs. Uh, just the arc faults are a nice peace of mind because I probably put in over 300 staples taking that along the attic. I use plastic ties to hold all of this together. I'm not a professional. I did this in my spare time and it took me nine hours to terminate this panel yesterday. I landed all the grounds first. I ran them all the way around up to the ground bar. Now arc fault circuit breakers, you're required to terminate the neutral to the breaker, not to the neutral bus. So had I taken all of these wires out of the conduits and had gone right to the circuit breakers. If I ever had to move these circuit breakers or take the arc faults out and put regular breakers in, my neutrals would never go to the neutral bus. I ran everything long. I kept it long on purpose. All these, I've got the 312 twos and I've got 610 threes. And I ran everything counterclockwise. And when I came onto this side, I looped back went to these circuit breakers. That way I have plenty of wire length. I can go anywhere in this panel now if need be. This 10 gauge wire, it's a bit of a bear to work with. I made myself a template for the wire terminations. I installed one of these two pole breakers in here and I got some scrap wire and I hooked it up to that circuit breaker and I put it in here into that gutter. So once I once I had that in and installed, on the bottom of the circuit breaker, I drew a line. And that's where this tape is. And that's what the wires look like when they're terminated to that circuit breaker. So what I ended up doing is once I had this done, I straightened all the wires out. I straightened all the wires out, so now I have a template. So every time I ran a branch circuit, I used plastic cable ties to hold it together. When I ran a second branch circuit, I put new ties on and cut the first set off. And I did that with every branch circuit I ran, so these wires would take the shape, so they don't look like a rat's nest. So when I got into here to terminate these, I brought my wires up and then I laid them with this line at the bottom of the circuit breaker. I knew where to cut all my wires. And then I did the same thing for every circuit breaker. I just kept moving up and I, I knew where to cut my wires. So once I cut my wires, then I slightly bent them like this and they slid right in. My main concern was cutting them short. Once you cut them short, you're out of luck. Another valuable tool with these arc faults because of the neutral, and the neutral is at the bottom of the circuit breaker, is the square drive tip. I highly recommend that if you're going to buy square drive tips, buy the Makitas. I looked at the Makitas and I looked at the DeWalt's. The Makitas were longer, so I picked the Makitas. And there was a benefit that I didn't realize once I picked the Makitas. The Makita has a reduced shank on it, which made it real easy for fitting down inside where these neutrals are. Because that neutral is buried in there. That reduced shank allows you to get inside that circuit breaker without grinding the hole bigger. It worked out really well. Because the neutrals are dedicated to each circuit breaker, and it was really difficult to label them, I labeled all the hots. So what I ended up doing is I took a plastic tie and I just put one tie around each group of three, the red, the black, and the white. That way if anything has to come apart. This group of branch circuits right here, 
This hoop comes down and then loops around and goes to this group of three circuit breakers. And these bend radiuses aren't tight at all. Everything is within the spec for bend radius. The 10 gauge wire is 0.1 diameter and times 8 is 0.8 bend radius. So what I ended up doing was I got a piece of conduit and the diameter is an inch and a half. And the inch and a half fits on all of this stuff. If you go in here and the bend radius is on all these wires. All these plastic cable ties are not tight. They're just there to keep the wires shape and the form of the box and keep it uniform. I really don't plan on adding any more service to this. I still have two breakers. I, I ran extra wire while I was in the attic so I still have two circuits at the other end of the house. So I, as it stands right now I'm pretty sure I'm set for the rest of my life on electric. I do have to say. I do recommend templates for the wiring. If you don't do this all the time and, and this is something you're doing on your own it saves a lot of time and it worked out really well. I was surprised how well that worked. Get the Makita square recess double ended power bit. Number two square drive. Thing works great. Better than a common screwdriver. To make a job easier make yourself a couple tools and buy some Makita square drives. Everything's closed up. It's ready for service.